Hi, welcome to my show, Trish. So today I have a really interesting guest. I've never talked to a voice therapist before. So I'm going to talk to Trish Watts today. And um, she's a singer, um, songwriter, educator with extensive experience as a performing artist and facilitator in Australia and overseas. She's also co-founder Interplay Australia, which is a community art practice of 25 years. And she's mm. a published songwriter and recording artist. Um, I know that you also co-created the startup of Cambodia Sings. And she's actually going to Cambodia in two days. Um, you also partner with Empowering Youth Cambodia, the Music Arts School, and Liga Learning Center. So a lot of things to do with voice is happening. So mm. you sound like a really busy woman. So welcome to my show. Thank you so much. It's what a joy to be able to share some of this with you. So I guess like I have a lot of questions to ask you and people who listen to my podcast often know that I like to interview people who have an inspiring and empowered journey. So I'm guessing your background is really um, music, like singing, writing songs. So tell me a little bit about how you get into um, what you do now and particularly voice therapy. Mm. Yes, it's a big journey with our voices and probably mine is similar to many in that, you know, growing up in a farming community, I grew up in the middle of uh, wheat and sheep farming community and singing was a really big part of our community. I grew up um, learning from the nuns, piano and singing with my dad and being, doing a lot of choir work. So I was very fortunate to have this kind of backbone of singing in my upbringing mm. so when I when I left school I really just knew I wanted to do something around singing and music and so I studied to be a high school music teacher and did that for quite a few years and then eventually moved into youth work and loved working with young people and doing conferences and rallies and uh, a lot of a lot of uh, choir work again, and singing and singing myself. So I started songwriting. Uh, I guess moving into what I do now, which is more voice movement therapy and interplay, has been quite a journey. From uh, I grew up in the church, so I had a lot of sacred music in my background. So a lot of music to do with unconditional love. I got to a point though in my life where I lost some close people close to me. Um, I went through a lot of grief mm. and I couldn't find, I lost my way. I couldn't figure out how to sing what was deeply inside me that was either, you know, the big emotions, anger, um, sadness, depression, um, feeling his, panicking, hysterical, these sort of emotions which are very big and um, often we feel you know, ashamed to have them, you know, to how do I express this, you know, mm. safely. So I found myself in search of, um, of a way that I could, could express myself safely and discover more of myself around my shadow and the things that were unconscious. And that put me on the track to voice movement therapy. Mm. So I think this is a good time for me to ask you this question, like what is voice therapy a voice movement therapy and I have an idea but I also want to touch on what you just said because I think often when we sing um when we express ourselves it's, you know people have many ways so some people like to dance some people like to sing some people like to draw but I do find singing quite therapeutic opening up what we are who we are within ourselves so I personally do find that singing is very therapeutic just from the pure joy perspective but tell me more about from your perspective as well as voice movement therapy mm. i mean i think you you expressed a really important one which is joy mm. there's nothing like singing to express joy the wonder of life it takes us into a, a safe space where we can if especially with 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 others mm. where we can be more than what we are just on our own but I suppose the other aspect of, you know, there's always, you know, the paradoxes of life, the contrasts. You know, if we have a lot of joy, there's also on the other side, we have a lot of suffering. And um, suffering is something that can um, cause a lot of pain in the body, emotional suffering. 
and where our psyche, that soul part of us that's really needing to, to have its voice, to have its way forward, sometimes can get blocked mm. because you've got the head saying one thing, the cognitive, and then you've got the heart saying another thing. And often they meet in the middle around the voice. Mm. And one says no and the other one says yes. And you get this constriction. Um, so working so that you can actually get the body freed up to be able to move it through, combine the head and the heart together a line, having the voice really helps to do that. And, um, you know, when we're going through a lot of emotion that just feels like we're going to drown in it, if I let this emotion out, I might drown or I might burn up if I express this much rage. Um, they're real fears that we have as, you know, and in our cultures, we have certain rules around what's okay and what's not in the way that we express. So to give people an opportunity where they come into an environment that's safe, where they can explore all the different aspects of being human and, and be able to express the unspeakable. That's what voice movement therapy gives you a space where you can express what is normally um, not allowed out in public. Mm. So that might be, you know, whether that's sobbing, whether that's hysterical laughter, whether that's um, shame, whether that's rage, whether um, just all the big emotions really, you know. Mm. Things so that's really interesting. Now I can't help but to think like, so I know that when we have trauma, when we have sadness, when we have, all these things that it's uncomfortable to deal with a lot of times that we store in our body if we don't deal with mm -hmm. it yes. and um and it could become disease or illness and it has it can manifest in many forms and i felt that what you're expressing is one way to sort of um take like move forward and sort of deal with that and so how does it look like say i i know i've gone through something really challenging say grief or guilt mm -hmm. or shame and then i come across your work and i think well maybe i'm not ready to go to like a counselor or i have been and it didn't really work for me whatever that mm -hmm. is I got attracted to your work and then I come to you say I don't know what you do but I just want to give it a go so how does it look like when when I mm. come to say work with you mm. so first of all I will work with your breathing to see where you're constricted with your breathing where you can whole... tell oh yes oh yes really yes. like like as yeah. in how? <laughs> like, so, then you so can there's... tell yeah. <laughs> so what I do is I, I look at your body. So it's, ah. are your ribs, are your ribs expanding? Do you have any breath in the back of your body? Is it, um, is the breath dropping down into the belly? Are you relaxed? Do you hold constriction? Are you held tight? Because if your body's tight, you're not breathing very mm. much. You're doing shallow breathing. So I work with the body to relax the body, to open it up, to let the breathing happen. Mm -hmm. So that's the first bit. The second bit is I listen to what the person is. Where are we? You know, like um, where is the emotion sitting? So as the person is talking to me, I'll listen to where, where an emotion may present itself or if it's their pain in the body. We might start there. Can we breathe into that part of the body? Can we give it some sound? Can we hum there? You know, start very softly. Can we breathe first? Can we hum? Can we sigh into there? Can we find a melody? Just a few notes. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That might be the little melody. And then I'll just say, you know, what are you thinking? What's, what's going on? Tell me what's in your thoughts. So we do a lot of um, unpacking what dialogue is going on. Hmm. So it's the dialogue, dialogue of the inner committee you know, as to who's up, you know, is the inner critic speaking? Is the saboteur up? Is the, is the, um, uh, like there's just hundreds of them, hundreds of, we call them sub personalities that jump up and want our attention. Is it the mother? Is it the dark mother? Is it the temptress? Is it the, there's just all these different aspects. So we help. So what I do is I try and help them find that voice and that character and that movement, how does that person move? You know, what, how does it embody in your body? 
and we find that voice and that movement. And then the idea is that once we start hearing that voice, we can then befriend it. Rather than push it all away, push, push those voices away, we say, ah, I see you, I hear you. And um, thank you for showing up. And I've got this. And then you listen for the next voice. So it's, it's a listening, getting to know the different aspects of your own psyche and who's in charge. So that the more we befriend all these different parts of ourselves, the easier it is to integrate our life experience. Mm. So that's really interesting. So do people often come to you um, out of curiosity or they have something stored and want to explore? Or what about it from the other angle that, you know, where I may not have a parent problem or issues, but I, I kind of want to be more creative or express more and, yes. and in, the, in the other direction where is there more there for me? Yes, yes, great point. Yes, so I work a lot with that. Often people come to me who are looking for their creative voice, who may have swallowed down, had to push down their creative voice because they've had to show up in another way for family or parents. So we work a lot with boundary setting, setting with boundary, um, you know, what's mine and what's theirs mm. and, uh, and getting clear around that, who's in my space, who's, you know, who do I want in my space, who do I not want in my space and how do I find, how do I give more room for my own creative voice mm. So and how to stand in that and, and um, feel your spine and feel your backbone in your own, in your own uh, knowing, your own truth. And that, you know, that can take time. So it's very relational and uh, the work. And um, it's, very it's very respectful because we're all at different stages of growth. Me too. I'm a learner mm. as well. I'm a student of this work also. And we're always learning. And to respect that we can never assume where another person is at. Mm. But to give people space to discover it for themselves and um, respect it. And that's why I think a lot of times that, you know, you would say you're like a facilitator because you're helping people mm. to discover or uncover something. So yes. if we may switch gear a little bit, I know you co-founded something called Interplay in Australia. And, yeah. uh, and I want to hear a little bit more about it because it's local. So people who are listening or watching us, mm. that if they're in Australia, they can, you know, obviously with you connecting with you could be online in person. I don't know, but we talk about that at the end. But Interplay seems to be something you do as a community at practice in Australia. So tell us a bit about Interplay. Yes, yes. This is one of my joys because Interplay is very much about unlocking the wisdom of the body and being truly yourself, being able to come home to yourself with, with that you can trust your own body if you come in relationship with it and practice that. Uh, it's very much improvisational based. So mm. what we do is very sequentially, you learn um, these practices where you can practice uh, storytelling, singing, dance, movement and stillness. They're our four forms that we use. Mm -hmm. And the other one is connection. So connection kind of weaves between all of them. And these are actually the five freedom paths that you'll find in all tribal communities in any arts communities that are healthy you'll find these five elements in there mm. the other one i think i'd add would be rhythm adding rhythm and drumbeat uh, so interplay has been yes we're coming up to 30 years of interplay um, as a practice and we have communities around australia in different capital cities Oh, what else can I say about so it? So is it often like group work, like as in that would be like mm. an event and a circle or some sort, and then those are the elements that you mentioned, and we come together, if you're interested in this um, uh, activity, then you go there as a group, you play as a group. Yes, yes. So by it's, somebody. Yes, it's play as a group. So you, but you always, you know, you work in duets, you work, with partners, you work with ensemble, with the ensemble, and then you work with the whole group. Mm. And you also do work on your own. Mm. So there's, there's space for each. And you go at your own pace. So it's very respectful also of 
you know, where people are at. I mean, some people come and they've got chronic fatigue or they may have a broken foot or a back injury. Um, so sometimes they might just come and lie on the floor, mm. but they can join in all the activities from there. And, you know, we work with disabled people. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's intergenerational. So children right through to adults. It's made, we mainly work with adults. Mm. And uh, I think the other wonderful thing I love with Interplay, it's all about making life easier than harder. Life doesn't have to be so hard. We can um, hmm, break open the myth that artistry is only for certain people. Artistry mm. and the beauty of expression is for everyone. And creative expression is for every human being. It's our right. It's our birthright to be able to express mm. and um, to have fun, you know, like to, to take the seriousness out. Everything's so serious these days. We have a lot of things going on in the world that are very serious. Uh, so to approach a problem that's presenting through the doorway of play opens up wonder and it opens up the gift of the moment and mm. the surprise of the moment. So it opens up a way that creates more ease rather than stress. And that's what we focus on mm. so that... Um, you so, can actually enjoy your life more. So when, let's say, I come into your interplay session with the community, then is it always with all these elements that there will always be some, so, some form of storytelling, singing, dancing? Um, I forgot the other one. There was one more element apart from rhythm. Uh, and stillness. Stillness. Uh, stillness. So you will, yeah. like, sort of you will have activities or exercise that go through all four, five yes. elements. Yes. So what about storytelling? Do people tell their own story or someone is telling a story? How does that yes, storytelling yes. work? Yeah. yeah. So the storytelling one is really fun because you, you go backwards and forwards. Like you might just start with, you know, tell me about for 30 seconds. Tell me, tell me, tell me everything you know about tomatoes. Oh, so it's random improvisation. It's random. So we give them a word and they have to talk about, talk about frangipanis, talk about maps. So you just build up, you know, things that are kind of quirky or you might play with a word, give them a made up word, you know, talk about shagalukadutu and then they well, have to talk about that. So i got to ask you this. You know how sometimes people can be so serious, as you say, you bring play and then you may somehow attract someone who is probably like myself, very analytical, very <laughs> critical and, and, oh, I think I need more creativity. So I walk in into something like that. But then with that kind of mindset, you ask me to talk about tomato, I'm going to like stare at you, right? <laughs> so, I mean, when someone is not open, but somehow yeah. stumble across your work, yeah. Yeah. how do you, how do you help those? Because I think it's fun yes. to just let yes. but how, what do you do? Yes. So we always start with a warm up. We warm the body up. So we always do stretches and we um, really get the body moving. And in that moment, you can see people, you can see the people that are stiffer. So the more that you can loosen up, okay, we just gonna we just have a little bit of you know things that everybody can do, you know, mm. and to do it at your own capacity. And then with the storytelling thing, you might not start off with talk about tomatoes. You might say, <laughs> okay, just tell us with your partner, tell us how you got here today. The first step might be, how did you get here today? To so get them oh, to God. open up and talk, yes, and warm and up the interaction. Where they are. Start where they are. Oh, I came by train. I came by. You know, I drove my car and I got lost, you know, and then you might say, what did you eat for lunch? What did you have for lunch? And they talk about that. So it's very step by step, you know, and then you might say, you know, well, tell us about, um, oh, what could be a next one? It might be. Um, well, there what could be tomato in their lunch. Yeah, that's right. Or it could be, you know, what's your favorite <laughs> holiday? What's your favorite book? You tell so us it's your... really getting people to warm up to. Yes, so you, it's very, yes, to share. And then you, then you just gradually, and before you know it, people are sharing things about themselves and they don't even know how they got to that, but they're doing it unconsciously. It's very... Um, are you saying they're going deeper than they think they would? Yes. Sometimes, yes. Interesting. Yes, sometimes because you're going through a different doorway. You're not going mm -hmm. head on. That's what you're I just think going too. Through, you build it. You build the blocks. You know, to be honest, sometimes I think in the most, 
you know, unexpected circumstance, you may tell a stranger the most horrible thing that you experience, just yes. because, you know, the circumstance, you, you, when you feel safe and you feel there's not much consequence, you wanted to tell somebody and you mm. open that doorway. And then sometimes you mm. say the most unexpected thing that you will share with and a that's stranger. That's true. I think a lot of it's about reception from the other person. If you've got mm. someone listening, who's truly listening, as one person speaking, the other one's listening. So you're practicing your listening skills as well. So you're really receiving the other person. Mm. And, and it's usually delightful and you kind of go, oh, I've done that too. I, I got stuck in the traffic too, you know. Um, and you find that we have more in common in our stories than we realise we do. Mm. It's a lot of common. And it sort of dropped the um, performance aspect that we've got to perform for each other. It's more about... You mean when it comes to the dancing, nobody is too self-conscious? No, because we start with warm-ups and you start on your own. You have your own little dance first and it might be just a hand dance. We don't ask the whole body to dance. We might just say, let's... And we lead people through a hand dance, you know, draw circles in the air, draw sevens, be jerky. Mm. be smooth um, you know put your hand on your body put your hand on the earth um, you know hold stillness yeah okay and then we put it all together mm. and I, and I love what you talked about I mean it's the connection aspect that you're really creating and so yes. often because I've been dancing for a while um, not in the recent past because it's too busy to very long but mm-hmm. I met my husband and a lot of friends through dancing and I think often people are very conscious about how they look how they behave like how they perform how how do they move and the same with people with singing there's a lot of people who love to sing but they say i can't sing i've got a bad voice blah 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 mm-hmm. so there's a lot of very conscious critical thing in our head and that mm-hmm. limit us from doing something most natural the children just my daughter sing and dance all the time and mm-hmm. she seems to think she's really good at all of those things <laughs> And she is. Yes. <laughs> and she is. And we all are, but we just, we've been so conditioned that it has to be a certain way. And what I find with Interplay, it just takes the lid off that mm. so that you can actually appreciate the beauty of being human mm-hmm. and the beauty of another human being in front of you and what they can do yeah. and who they are. And that's really the connections really missing. I find a lot of times that people are so into their own like phone or ipad especially younger people like kids yeah and then then a lot of problems come about because they don't know how to communicate they don't know how to express they don't know how to connect mm. and mm. and activities like that on a paper people will say oh where am i going to get out of it it's not like that it's like it's an experience so you cannot quantify mm. an experience necessarily like that so mm. but i think mm. it's it's really important to have fun and play and it's a self-nurturing aspect and sometimes we Very just don't much. even know how to nurture ourselves yes oh you are spot on it's so nourishing it's so it's about self-care mm-hmm. and really listening to your own body you know because there might be times we might say you know move your arm and that person might not be able to so we just say okay just lift your shoulder you know if that's all you can do if that's what you can do today that's absolutely fine you know you do what you can do on the day and mm. Um, but that nourishing when we always in performance world, you know, people burning out and giving too much. Um, yeah. To remember that there is wonder and there is, um, fun to be had with yeah, each other. I liked it because I think a lot of times people want to make sure they look good or they are doing it right. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. that robs yeah. them from the experience when that's all yeah. you think about. Am I looking good? Am I doing yeah. it right? Do I look like, you know, I, I, I have what, what um, they can dance or they can sing? Like, yeah. I think it's really not freeing us when yes. we have that. So I think this is yes. a good opportunity. So now street, switch gear again. I want to, before you wrap, we wrap up, I want to ask you about your work in Cambodia. So you hmm. work with um, young people, youth, um, yes. again with music and art. So tell us what's happening there. So I know you're going to Cambodia. So you're doing some youth work there? Yes. So I was very fortunate to be involved in setting up Cambodia Sings with a friend, Elaine Yun. And 
what we aim to do is to bring back the joy of singing and the love and joy of singing for all of Cambodians. That's the, that's the mm. vision. So we, we work with young people from the age of four to probably 17 mm -hmm. uh, in non-government schools. And they're schools that teach um, English and computer skills. So we go in and use singing as a way of teaching English. Mm. And we also sing Cambodian songs as well. But uh, it's been an incredible experience to be part of this and to be with these children who would just not, wouldn't, they have the talent, but they don't always have the opportunity. So to give them the opportunity to have their voices and to um, feel the connection with each other and to feel the power of that, it's very empowering in a country that has been so muted mm. through war and civil war and um, dictatorship to actually give them the opportunity to express is uh, very important. Mm. And you can see that sort of transformation or changes in the young people when they are allowed to use the voice, even though it's just singing, but it's mm. a way of expressing themselves. Mm. Well, singing is also a kind of an acceptable sort of to have a group singing. Um, you would think it's not, um, hmm, how do I explain this? It's, it's a sneaky way of building community. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Because uh, I find now like the little areas where we work, which are in slum areas, these communities, these children are giving a reason other than survival and, you know, having to work, go mm. out and work at a young age. They're actually bringing some music and singing on the back of motorbikes. These kids are singing to their parents mm -hmm. and it's making a difference. You know, they're amazed. The parents are amazed. My child just sang to me, my four-year-old on the back of my bike. And I think, wow, that's just so fun. And he was amazed that this little kid could do it. And because he'd never done it as a child, mm. he wasn't allowed to. So uh, time Sneaky will tell. Sneaky way of building a community. And it's interesting what you said. Like, as in, I think it's kind of a way to unite people in some sense. Yeah. And heal. And it's heal. Deeply healing. It's so soothing. Singing is such a soothing, healing thing for communities that have been so violated. Mm. Wow. So I think this it sounds like a really meaningful work. So I guess, I think a lot of our listeners are probably Australia-based or sometimes US and UK, but, um, but for people who want to connect with you, say, whether mm. it's work with you on voice movement therapy or hear more about Interplay. So Interplay is definitely happening in Australia and is a one, like in-person event. But tell us how can people connect with you online or in person so mm. um and mm. so they can get some information yes thank you for that um I, i'm on facebook so it's trish watts soul voice so that's my facebook and or one just, word or four words uh, the four words four I'll words yes. i'll put a yep. link at the bottom of the podcast as well so thank you thank you and then interplay australia has a website if you just put in interplay australia it will come up and it tells all the events and the workshops that are on. And Voice Movement Therapy Oceana is um, the Australian website for voice movement therapy. Mm -hmm. And then if you're interested in international, it's uh, the International Association for Voice Movement Therapy that has more details around voice movement therapy work. Yeah. Not a problem. I'll put all the links at the bottom of the podcast. And Cambodia Sings. Yes. Cambodia Things has one as well. Yeah. yeah. So I will put all the websites and links there so people can check it out and uh, find out more about Trish's work and also, you know, the nature of interplay and also voice movement therapy. So thank Great. you so much for today. Thank you so much. And it's this so has been different. a joy. Like, it's such a different type of therapy or just yes. play. It's it's not like, um, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people maybe doing more physical type of therapy or aromatherapy, mm. massage or, or coaching, but this is something quite different. And I hope mm. more people will be open to try and 
maybe when they have the self care day or mm. you know a learning mm-hmm. day, they try something different and mm. you know surprise themselves with play. Right, we're working so hard all this time, so play true. is important. True, it is. It is. Thank you so much, Suing. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Mm-hmm. Okay.